Chances are you've heard of ChatGPT or AI chatbots or other AI tools in the last, you know, three, four, five months. They've been sweeping the globe. You know, lots of people having all sorts of perspectives from the end of the world to this is the greatest thing since the internet. Now, my perspective is that we cannot deny that it is going to change a lot of stuff. And one of the things that it's already changing is the ability to learn. Chat GPT and AI chatbots are extremely useful in learning new subjects, and they can be a very, very powerful tool. And the same goes for flight training and your ground training using AI. It can be a very, very powerful tool. So this video is going to tell you guys how you can use this AI chatbot powered through our website, Part-Time Pilot. So we pay for the access to ChatGPT made by OpenAI that our students can use through this page and the chatbot right here. So you can use it free of charge if you're a student to our site. And now I'm going to give you some tips and pointers on how to use it because there are some limitations and things like that. Now, first, I want to just say a quick disclaimer that this chat box, again, is powered by ChatGPT through OpenAI. There are certain limitations that this AI engine has that you can read and I'm going to link that to OpenAI and their policies and their terms and conditions. Therefore, answers you get from this chat box that go against or counter to anything published by the FAA or directed to you by your flight instructor should be ignored. Remember, this is just a tool to aid in learning. It is not the end-all be-all or the place to get all your answers. That would be the FAA and your flight instructor. Part-time pilot is not in any way liable for any answers, advice, or information given by ChatGPT. When in doubt, follow what we have in the part-time pilot online ground school and in your far aim. So I just want to throw out that disclaimer. There are limitations to chat GPT. And if it's counterintuitive to what your flight instructor told you, what you believe is safe in the aircraft or what the FAA has, then forget about it, right? Just use it as a tool to aid in your learning. So with that said, let's get to some of the tips and tricks. The first one I have written right here is you want to start your first prompt and say, act as a flight instructor. You want to let chat GPT know what topic of conversation we're talking about, what kind of of perspective you want their answers to come from. And so that is what you need to start off your first prompt up all the time is act as a flight instructor, or you might want to say act as an air traffic controller. If you're, you know, you're talking about a certain FAR or an FAA examiner or something like that, but you want to give them the right perspective because let's say you ask a question about airflow. It might think you're talking about the airflow of a car engine or a vacuum or something. You have to give it the right context. And so by starting it out, like act as a flight instructor, and we'll give some examples of this here in a little bit. So here I have a question, act as a flight instructor and explain to me how an aircraft stalls. So we click the send button, it, it's gonna take a little bit of time and it depends again how much the chat GPT servers and AI engine is being used, sometimes it takes longer. But here it says, sure, happy to help. An aircraft stall occurs when the angle of attack of the wings exceeds the critical of attack, blah, 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 blah. And it goes on and on some different answers. Now, the next tip I wanna give, if these answers are too long or too complex, you can add in things like describe in the simplest terms or explain this to me in three sentences or less. So as you can see, I've typed in, I've typed that in and I click send now, and now we'll get to see how the answer changes. Now look how much shorter and more condensed this is. An aircraft stalls when the angle of attack of the wings exceeds the critical angle of attack. This can cause a sudden loss of lift and drop in altitude. To recover from a stall, the pilot needs to lower the angle of attack by pushing the nose down and adding power if necessary. Boom. So it condensed it. That's a simple trick right there. Now, the next trick is that this is like a conversation. So as you continue on, it's going to remember things we talked about. You can refer back to things you talked about and you could say in your last answer, you know, change this or what if it was this? It's like a conversation. That's the whole part of AI. It will remember what it talked about. So let's give an example of that. So as you can see here, I'm talking conversationally. If we're coming from a power on stall, what is different? So right, what is different like in terms of how they said we will recover from a stall? I'm saying, okay, specifically it's a power on stall, what would be different? And let's see how that answers. If recovering from power on stall, the pilot needs to reduce the engine power to reduce the aircraft's climbing speed. So it knows, right? It, it's a conversation. It has some memory from the conversation and you can talk to it conversationally. So let's just try some other things here. Let's say act as an air traffic controller and give me clearance for landing in my aircraft with tail number N2345 on runway 27. Let's see how ChatGPT reacts to this and saying, hey, act as an air traffic controller. Good afternoon, this is the air traffic control tower. You are cleared for landing on runway 27. Please proceed with caution and follow all instructions from ground control. Welcome and have a safe landing. Now 
Uh, okay, so maybe this is some limitations that we see here. Your air traffic controller is not going to say good afternoon. It's not going to say welcome and have a safe land. They might, uh, depending on how busy they are. You know, so it's got some, some of it right and some of it wrong. So there are some limitations and, you know, maybe some tools such as just liveatc.net, stuff like that would be more useful to talking to air traffic control. But let's try something else here. Maybe we can try to see if it gives us some FA written test questions. So here I've asked, what are some private pilot FA written test questions on stalls? Let's see how ChatGPT handles this prompt. All right, sure. Here are some possible FA written test questions related to stalls that a private pilot candidate might encounter. What is a stall? What is the difference between an aerodynamic stall and a structural stall? What are the four main factors? Okay, so it gave us a list. And now let's see, we'll see if we want to know the answer. What is the answer to question three above? The four main factors that affect stall speed are weight, load factor, altitude, and configuration, such as flaps and landing gear position. As weight, load factor, and altitude increase, stall speed also increases. Okay, so this is an accurate answer for question three above, which was what are the four main factors that affect stall speed? So this is a great way to study. You can literally have a conversation with ChatGPT. You can say, what are some FA written test questions on a subject that you're weak on? Let's say it stalls. And then you can try and answer these 10 questions that it gave you, right? You can maybe write down on a piece of paper. And then when you're done, you can ask, what are the answers? And it'll tell you for each of the questions what the answers are. Fantastic learning tool right there that you can use in a good way to use ChatGPT effectively. All right, so let's try one more. Let's say we're studying for a check ride. Let's ask ChatGPT to act as a designated pilot examiner and ask us a question about density altitude as if it was in an oral exam. So let's see how ChatGPT handles this one. Sure, here's a question I might ask you in an oral exam as a DPE. What is density altitude and how does it affect the performance of an aircraft? Please provide a comprehensive answer, including an explanation of the factors that contribute to density altitude and how they impact aircraft operations. This is good, right? This can definitely be useful in studying because it did ask you a question. And again, if you ask for the answer, just like we did before, I bet you ChatGPT would give you a pretty good answer. But a designated pilot examiner is kind of missing their context and their linguistics of how they would ask you things in the context of a check ride oral exam. It'll be more situational based, you know, according to your flight plan for that day. So maybe you can ask ChatGPT to ask you a situational based question and give us some more context. Again, that's more work on your side, but something that you could do using the tool. Okay, so that's been a quick tutorial of how to use ChatGPT through our website. Again, we have paid for a subscription for ChatGPT for you guys to use this. I'm going to have a link and it's going to be a pop-up on all our lessons. That's the plan. We're going to do a test run to see you know, how much it costs us, how much you guys like it, if it causes any issues or anything like that. But I think it could be a very, very valuable tool. So once you're in the online ground school, this is just another thing that you'll be able to get. Now, just remember, you know, you want to give it context. You have to give it context. You so say act as a flight instructor, and then you can use things you know, be specific on how you want it to give your answer, you know, in three bullet points, three sentences, as little words as possible, whatever, or as an example. And then also remember that it has limitations. So you can't trust everything that it says. When in doubt, you know, trust the FAA, trust your flight instructor, and trust what we have in the online ground school.